Two years after the end of the war, much of Europe is still in ruins. Than anyone else, 20 million unfortunate children of Europe are waiting and hoping for a life that has brighter things to offer than unending hunger and sadness. Horses are grazing in the once beautiful city parks of Germany, surrounded by which were, a few years ago, the pride of the old continent. Hundreds of railroad stations, like this one in Hamburg, are awaiting repairs. Most of the bridges were destroyed. Small ferry boats and primitive spans are used by the people to cross rivers. Thousands of villages, like this one in Italy, are in ruins and it will take many years of patient work to rebuild them. In Central Europe, Prague offers the nearest thing to normalcy. The Czechoslovaks have worked hard to reconstruct their country and already some of life's small luxuries, like beer, can be enjoyed in the Czech and Slovak cities outdoors restaurant. The royal palace of Budapest, Hungary is still in rubble. The imposing Soviet monument in the Hungarian capital symbolizes the new state of affairs in Eastern Europe. Slovene villages shared in the havoc of the war, as did ancient and artistic cities like Florence, Italy. The lack of modern machinery compels the farmers of Germany, Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, Hungary, Italy and Romania to use the same old methods of agriculture their fathers and grandfathers used. This reduces production just when all countries in Europe are on the verge of starvation. Life for the women of Europe is especially hard since even the most ordinary household appliances which are taken for granted in America are non-existent throughout most of Europe. of people are still homeless because reconstruction is extremely slow. Everything must be done by hand. Before the ox is converted into food, he is used for many years as a beast of burden.
Ruins and more ruins are among the earliest recollections of millions of children in Europe today. Mothers still have to stand in line for the little food available to the average person. Marketplaces like this one in Budapest have nothing but second and third hand merchandise for sale. In America we throw away millions of bottles. In Europe they are valuable. Crippled children are everywhere. The thousands of homeless children easily become petty thieves or engage in other forms of juvenile delinquency. Children in the ruined villages of Italy can enjoy only the simplest pleasures of life. They learn early how to balance heavy loads on their head. To poor Italian mothers, even water is a luxury because it has to be brought from far. On all Italian roads, donkey carts are part of the scenery. Children and young people in Europe by necessity start working very early. This Italian will have earned everything and anything that he can produce from this hard clay. The apprentice system is still widespread. These Italian boys are typical of the hundreds of thousands of youngsters all over Europe who start their respective trades very early. future advertising executives begin their profession at the bottom of the ladder. It is also an easy way to earn pocket money. The heavy jobs in the building industry, like mixing and carrying plaster and cement, are taken not only by men, but also by girls, as shown here by these young Slovene women. The Slovak boy on the right no doubt would rather play, but he has to help his parents in the fields. Children in Budapest and other devastated cities earn a few pennies by reclaiming bricks from the ruins. Her mother is at work, so this 10-year-old Hungarian girl is doing the family wash. There is enough sorrow for a whole life in her face. In Belgrade, boys on construction jobs perform the same work as adults do. Croatian children and mothers 
carry loads of dried leaves for mattress stuffing. For this Budapest boy, apricots are a luxury he long will remember. In Prague, babies have a better start in life beginning with modern perambulators. The baby buggies of the fashionable set in Rome are positively cute. However, thousands of Italian mothers are reduced to begging. This one is tired very tired. Even poverty and ruins cannot stop children from playing. These Viennese girls consider their dolls their greatest treasure. These boys, also in Vienna, are so fascinated with a game of football, a gift from America, that they forget their hunger, at least for a while. The bridge ruins in Vienna are a popular playground. In nearly normal Prague, the merry-go-round is in great demand. Children's swings are also popular but the children have to pay to use them. Country boys in Hungary indulge in fishing, and little girls enjoy such innocent pleasures as tumbling. In Budapest, the boys like to steal rides on streetcars, but of course they always did. Village children in Slovenia, like children everywhere, are great lovers of animals. Here they admire a new household pet, a young doe. Sunken bridges in Budapest do not stop Hungarian boys from swimming in the Danube. Their mascot comes to see the proceedings. Croatian boys find the waterfall cooling, even though the water is not crystal pure. Goats have to have a bath too. In Venice, the boys use the Grand Canal for their swimming. In Rome, however, the boys have few other places for swimming than the public fountains.
times police interferes with such undignified pleasures and on such occasions the boys leave the scene in a hurry, sometimes in quite a hurry. Mud or no mud, Slovak children like their pond. Mama and the youngest of the brood are watching. Like all children in Europe, Slovak youngsters too go home from school in marching groups. This is a Slovak village school and the children are taking home their report cards. They don't seem too happy to enjoy it. In larger cities like Ljubljana, schools are imposing buildings. Like most village schools, this Croatian country school is modest. New schools are given priority by all government. This one is in Yugoslavia. In Moravian villages of Czechoslovakia, the children are well fed and seem happy even when they go or come from school. Most gypsies in Europe have stopped roaming around and settled down in villages. In this Hungarian gypsy settlement, the principal industry is basket weaving and gypsy children start learning the trade very early. Involuntary exchange of populations is one of the saddest consequences of the war. An example is the village of Guta in Slovakia, from which nearly all the Hungarian-speaking population was removed forcibly to Hungary. The expelled families are allowed to take with them their household goods and all movable property they have. Huddled in boxcars, they are then taken to a new and uncertain life. Still more uncertain and tragic is the fate of the hundreds of thousands of displaced persons in Germany belonging to all religions and all nationalities of Eastern Europe. This Jewish displaced persons camp near Berchtesgaden is on what once was the private airfield of Hitler.
The building which served as Hitler's private air station today is a hospital for Jewish displaced children. These small Jewish boys and girls have been brought here by their parents or relief organizations from every country of Eastern and Central Europe. Even with the best of possible care, these children are suffering hardships and privations unknown even to the poorest American boys and girls. The Children's Center at Prien, Germany, is another of the many examples brought about by the war in the lives of thousands of children. Everyone belongs to a different nationality. The girl on the left is a Mongol from the Soviet Union. The others are Polish, Lithuanian, Latvian, Estonian, and Yugoslav. A home for children of working mothers in Prague is one of the brighter sides of the picture. In no area of national and international recovery is so much being done by all governments as in organized child care. Lucky are those children who are aided by some American agency. This children's home in Czechoslovakia, for instance, is supported chiefly by the Unitarian Church of America. The majority of these boys and girls was picked up during the war after heavy bombardments when no trace was found of their parents. The names of many are unknown to this day. The wholesome food from America is helping to build strong bodies. Cod liver oil is a great luxury. On the shore of Lake Bolaton in Hungary, I found a Boy Scout group which tried very hard to revive the fine work this organization did before the war throughout Europe. These Hungarian Boy Scouts are shown at assembly, flag raising, prayer, and later at lunch.
every one of these boys has eaten regular meals only since he is in camp. When they return to their home, they resume their dread at hungry existence. During the bombardment of Budapest, hundreds of nearly naked children were roaming the streets in eternal search for food and shelter. A Protestant minister named Reverend Stalo was so moved by the miserable lot of these children that he left his position as pastor of a church and established an orphanage in the residence of an industrialist who fled the country. The man in blue is Reverend Stalo. The swimming pool too was built by the children. In cities, most children are forced to play in the street. These children in a summer camp near Budapest are a few of the 45,000 boys and girls who received every day one warm meal from Swedish and Danish relief agencies. This new nursery home in Belgrade is one of the many the Yugoslav government is maintaining. Marshal Tito is building up a new generation in Yugoslavia which, he hopes, will follow his ideals. Some of the mothers return from time to time to feed their babies. From kindergarten age up, Yugoslav children are given much attention by Tito's teacher. is my mommy once a private residence in Zagreb Croatia this building is now an orphanage for the children of Tito's partisans the Yugoslav government is lavishing much attention on them. The dance is called the Tito Colo. On the beach of Ostia, north of Rome, the more fortunate orphans of Italy spend two weeks at a time, but only a few thousands of the half million Italian orphans may enjoy this sort of vacation. The Italian government the Vatican and private and municipal welfare agencies take care of some of the orphans, but the need for outside aid is very great.
Jewish relief agencies also maintain summer vacation places for their orphans. The American Red Cross makes substantial donations to organized child care in Europe. Last summer, for instance, it donated to the Hungarian Red Cross a fleet of large American trucks. The president of Hungary, Zoltán Tildi, arrives at the presentation ceremony. Next to the president is Louis Dinesh, prime minister of Hungary. The American ambassador formally presents the gift of the American people to the Hungarian Red Cross. American occupational authorities in Germany are doing their best to teach German youth the principles and practices of democratic life and government. Sergeant Patrick Moriarty achieved considerable fame as the organizer of the first German boys club in Bremen. Here he is with the committee of the club. The name of the paper is The Bridge. It is printed and circulated by the boys and is read by considerable number of German adults too. Another one of the hundreds of American sponsored clubs for German youth is this one in Frankfurt. With gifts received from abroad, these German girls make their own dresses. German boys, under American guidance, learn handicraft by using discarded tin cans. Youth in Europe is active in politics. This parade, for instance, was staged by the Czechoslovak Catholic youth in Prague as a counter demonstration to a communist parade. In Eastern Europe, the governments, friendly to the Soviets, have initiated a new system of work for the youth, called voluntary labor. These Czechoslovak young people are building the foundation of an airplane hangar near Brno. In Yugoslavia, the so-called voluntary labor of young people is an essential part in the reconstruction of the country. How much of this so-called voluntary labor is really voluntary 
and how much of it is under pressure is open to debate. This outdoor memorial in Bologna, Italy, shows pictures of young partisans who died fighting the retreating Germans and Mussolini's troops. Another kind of memorial is this military cemetery with 7,000 American graves at Nettuno, one mile from Anzio in Italy, where history was written in the blood of 20,000 American soldiers, wounded or dead. When they go to school, European children carry not only books, but also a mess kit in which they can get a noon meal at school. For most of them, this is the only warm meal they eat. Their faces and bodies carry the unmistakable signs of malnutrition and often tuberculosis. After school hours and during vacation, German children go through the ruins hoping to find anything of value. The hovels in many parts of destroyed Italy are quite a contrast with the beautiful sunshine of that country. Ragged boys add to the meager Italian family income by searching for used artillery shells that various armies left behind. All over Italy, children constantly search for anything of value in the ruins of their villages. Like these two Italian boys, millions of children in Europe wear ill-fitting, ragged clothes and shoes or nothing at all. A few of the 12,000 Italian children who were mutilated during and after the war. Throughout Europe, children with one leg or one arm can be seen struggling along with primitive artificial limbs or none at all. Most of them are victims of mines the Germans left in fields and along roadsides. Hundreds of children from all war-torn countries of Europe find a happy refuge in a children's village, Pestalozzidorf, in Switzerland. With a population of only four million, peaceful Switzerland has taken on heavy burdens in helping hundreds of thousands of children of the less fortunate countries of Europe. The children brought here of many nationalities cannot believe their eyes when they see so many dresses and so much food. As the world enters upon the third year of uncertain and uneasy peace, the 20 million unfortunate children of Europe are wondering when hunger, misery, cold and illness will be left behind so they can live like normal children. 